What's the crack, lads? I'm Paul Harry Manlyface, and welcome to Icy. Now, I'm going to probably do like a series on this. I don't know whether I will. I'll see. If, um, if I'm not, it's just going to be a free game with Paul, because it is a free game. I found it on a... Oh, what's that? The game Jolt. That's the one. And, uh, yeah, it seems really cool. I'm not sure whether this is just a demo version of it, though, or whether it's just alpha. If it's demo, then it'll probably be a small enough game, and I'll just make it into the thing. One episode for free games. Okay. Okay, so, we're just going to see. Oh, cool music. Okay. Who do we want to be? I like that last dude's beard. We're going to go with him. Okay. Two years ago, you lost your memory in a strange accident. Since that day, you were welcomed in a nomad family and lived as a nomad. There you go. Today is just like any other day. You are into a forest. What? You are into... You are into a forest. I'm into a forest. Damn, that's one sexy forest. You are into a forest hunting with Jerome, one of your companions and familiars. Next. Jerome. Oh. You wake up into the woods surrounded by snow and ancient trees. A cold wind is blowing on your face and you suddenly feel that your arms and legs are chilled to the bone. You feel a gentle touch on your shoulder. It's Jerome that woke you up. The bait you set up two hours ago f finally lured the beast. Wake up. Oh. It's a person. Wake up. We have a prey on sight. He smiles at you and keeps talking. Come on. Come on. Don't be lazy. And wake the fuck up. <laughs> oh God. Yes. You feel. You still feel confused. And the white glowing snow dazzles you. But you soon manage to get on your feet. The old man is watching you with his friendly smile. Just waiting for your brain to start properly working again. Okay. Give me a second. Give me a second. Be quick. Don't want to see our dinner running away. Look at the majestic deer. Majestic deer. To die might be our lucky die. You're damn right. Yeah, yo. The deers get closer. Lured by bait you placed some hours ago. It's a truly majestic beat. It could provide food for several days. Shoot the deer. And smiles at you and lowers his bow. It's all yours. But if you miss, I may drop not so many many tears. Not so many tears. Hey, I shot him. You slowly draw your bow, point the arrow directly to the deer's head. You stop breathing for some seconds to stabilize your aim. Then you shoot. It's a perfect shot and the deer falls in the snow with a muffled sound. Oh, that's not a nice looking... No. Nice fucking head... Nice fucking headshot. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just doing a normal voice for him. I can't, I can't handle that. You see, that's why I wanted you to come with me. Let's go grab our dinner. Jerome starts walking towards the deer's carcass. You get close to the deer, the majestic beast is dead and will provide days of food for your family. Let's let's take our dinner out of here. It's not even noon, Hector. We'll ha oh, Hector will have something else for us to do, you can be sure of that. You tie the deer to a strong pole and head back to the camp. John keeps talking for all the trip. Still a little excited for what you're bringing back. Okay, so this is kind of like what it is. You kind of like wander around and go. Click where you have to go in the world and kind of have to feed the camp and shit seems kind of cool oh I didn't read that sorry well we're going to eat fucking deer for dinner here in his fucking <laughs> Jerome smiles and puts his hand on your shoulder well 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 suddenly Goran appears behind your back you brought back a week of food Goran where are the others you see Hector coming out of his tent it seemed he doesn't seem to be too well. They're hunting south of here. You know Irma. She can't simply stand doing nothing. Neither. Anything else we can do? Well, this deer isn't going to chop itself into pieces, so we better start doing that and maybe we'll have some hours for another run. Let me do that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck here anyway. My ankle still hurts and it's still be I better not walk around. Go for another run. Try to take as much food as possible. There's a long road ahead and I don't want to lose time every fucking day. Let's stock some food. Jerome, look at the sun. 
We have time, so I guess we go for another run. At least we won't get bored. I guess it's better than nothing. But don't fall asleep again. I am the old one. I am the one allowed to sleep around at random. Come on, let's go. Take the lead this time. Okay. Mm. Okay, off we go. Whee! Oh, my throat. Okay, day one. In order to start hunting, enter into a forest and press hunt button in the right corner. Quickly scavenge the area. It takes up to two hours and increases the risk. Scavenge the area. It takes up to four hours. Carefully scavenge. Carefully. Um. Use guns. Use bow and arrow. Guns. Jesus. You kill some deer and get a lot of meat. Um, take everything. Head back. Go. Go, my friends. Finally. Finally. I really need to take some rest. You take a glance at the camp. Your companions are talking and taking care of dinner. It seems everyone came back in safety. Goran approached you. So, how did it go? Really good. Come near the fire. Dinner is... Oh, come near the fire. Dinner is almost ready. <laughs> you, you will need it for tomorrow. Hector seems to be eager to move as soon as possible in the morning. You take your seat near the fire while others greet you. Irma, Goran's wife, starts giving plates of cooked meat to the group. Okay. So I'll be thankful. Oh, shit. So I'll be thankful to our hunters for the meat we're going to eat. About to eat, shit. Hector coughs after finishing his speak. Will you tell us where we are headed? Not far from here. Tomorrow we will go scavenging in a town nearby, hoping to find something useful for our travelling. No, I mean, where are we going to end up after the long run? Where will we spend the winter? We will travel south. Oh, we will travel south, far from any common route. We must get away from the plains. Hector coughs again. He coughed a bit early for me to talk. The planes are becoming dangerous, and I'm not talking about the bandits' activity. There are rumours about more and more red horsemen swarming around here. What does it mean? I'm tired of travelling without a purpose. We always stay in planes, why should we travel to the unknown lands? <laughs> Don't worry! It's all snow and cold just here, just like you. What? No, just like here. You didn't miss anything special. Oh, new person. Um. I don't have a voice for you, so I'm just going to talk. I don't care what we do. If the planes have become that dangerous, we should probably go away. I won't put my children at risk without a reason. Ah! And travelling away from any known route is a risk, especially when the only thing we know is that we're going south. Um, Hector never failed us. I have to right to know where my, me, my husband and my children are going to end. South is not enough. There's no need to worry about that. We've uh, we've been there. Well, we've already been south of here. Jerome turns to you. Do you remember when we found where we found our friend? We're getting close to that area, so we didn't, don't have to worry. And what are we going to do next? Do we have to place stay? Oh, a place to spend. Yeah. Do we have a place where to spend the winter, or we're just running away from the plains without a real destination? Hector seems quite annoyed. I already said that the planes are becoming dangerous. Don't you don't want a red horseman clan to assault us and slave the survivors, do you? It's better to walk on the mantle for the whole winter rather than facing them. Sooner we'll run away from them, the safer we will be. So we have no choice. Yes, but I'm confident that we will be able to survive and maybe find a better place where to live. I'm getting too old to walk all day anyways. Oh, my throat is hurting from all this talking. Ugh. And you're not the only one, but I'm clearly in a better shape than you. I can keep doing this for this life for some more years. Am I the only one with a working brain right here? We're running into the unknown. You're just afraid. Of course I am. You're asking me to put all my family in danger. Do as you like, but I don't know where we'll get this. Irma goes inside her tent before giving anyone a chance to say something. I'll talk to her. I'm worried too, but facing the red horse and scares me even more. She will understand eventually. Hector coughs a little before replying. I hope so. I don't want to discuss this ever again. 
Nothing unfortunate happens during the rest of the evening. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. You wake up in the morning, hear some voices outside. Ugh. Oh. Ugh. Oh. Okay, people, now we will spread out in couples and search for everything, anything useful in that small town over there. Let's see if we can find some tools. Irma, Irma will stay here with the children and guard her stuff. If anything happens, you scream. I will go with Jerome. Goran will with Mark. Hector turns to you. And you go with Demetra. I hope it won't be a waste of time. Goran puts on his backpack. I'm tired of seeing all the empty buildings. Depart. Fuck, fuck that shit. Hello, woman. I found you a <laughs> Oh, should I be doing this voice to my trust like that? It's a very small area. To start scavenging an area. Okay. Do that. I am grappling hook. Try to climb. Grappling hook. Okay. What is them things? Take everything, may as well. Go back before sunset. Okay. Fucking flying. Off we go. After a couple of hours, you manage to reach the others at the camp. Goran spots you from distance and greets you by raising his hand. You see sadness on his face. What is going on? That is not easy to say. Goran takes a deep breath. Hector got his body sick. He passed out a few hours ago and he's now in his tent, barely able to breathe. That's awful. Situation is desperate. We have no medicines to cure this kind of sickness, and he's pretty bad now. You see Jerome coming from Hector's tent, his face painted with suffering. As far as you know, he and Hector have been friends for a long time. People gather around Hector's tent, and Mark takes the word. How is he? In that same moment, Irma comes out of the tent. Jerome sighs. It's. It's over! We couldn't do anything! Oh, he wasn't shouting about that one. Jesus. Holy fuck. Why didn't he say a thing about his health? You know Hector. He wanted us to go away from the planes and he didn't want anything to stop us. Goran stays silent for some some seconds. Then he raises his head and speaks again. I I will prepare the body for funeral. You should go and take a break. People scatter around Jerome comes near you and sighs again. You two are now alone. I met Hector more than 20 years ago and yet he said nothing. Not to anyone. Not to me. He just died. Leaving a mess behind. Tomorrow we'll need to vote for our new leader and it will be a mess. Everyone will discuss. I bet Irma will go crazy again, screaming and threatening people. You don't have to say nothing. He is not the first friend to die. I'm lucky to be old. Hopefully I won't see another friend's funeral. I need to be alone for some time. Call me when Goran has finished the pyre. Jerome walks away and sits not far. Okay. Jesus, that's so fire. All the people gather around the big stack of wood after making sure that everyone is there. Goran throws a lit torch on the fire, which slowly starts to burn, shouting Hector's body in a dance of bright flames. Jerome has a sad face and says nothing. He just stands in the front of the fire and stands there and stays there even after everyone is gone. You're tired and you proceed to your tent, hoping to get a decent night of sleep. But a terrible scream wakes you up in the middle of the night and you see, you see strange light through the fabric of your tent and hear the noise of clouds stumping around. Several guns fired as well. You're under attack. Okay. During the night, your group was attacked. Um, fall back. Attack! Oh my fucking god! Oh god, that's not good. Um. Oh god, what do I do? Okay. Okay, yes. No. Um fall back. Oh god. You feel weak and aching, but you try to crawl on the ground and but with each movement you feel pain all over your body. You try to stay awake, but soon your willpower weakens and you pass out. After that, there's only darkness. You don't know how long you can stay unconscious. Strange dreams populate your mind. Of dreams, a different place, a different time. Oh god, I miss something. During the, the dream, you're here from your voice. It's Jerome. He's calling to you, asking you to wake up. You finally realize you're dreaming. This sudden co consciousness brings you back to the world. Hey, wake up. Are you okay? What happened? 
Well, the situation is pretty messed up. Just take a look around you. Look around yourself. The morning sun blinds you at first, then you're able to see that you and your mates are sitting on the ground tied. We're not the only prisoners, and there are other people that seem to share your condition. Armed bandits are guarding the area. You can see many tents scattered around. It's difficult to understand how many there are. Running away from them won't be easy. They have guns and everything. Else they, everything else they need to keep us on, in our place. Ah, yeah, look happy. Yeah, you will never escape. We tried. We tried. What? We tried, but they're too many. They have horses and guns. And if we, if they want to survive, I fear we will have. We will all soon become slaves. Ah, Jesus, I can't read. I'd rather die. Precisely. We all know how slaves are treated, like animals. I won't be beaten again, just because some of you, someone of you, wants to do something that stupid. They beat all of us, Joseph. But what should we do? Just wait here because and be sold as slaves. Long story short, we tried to run away during the night. They found us and beat the shit out of us. Ah, his big sweaty head. End of the story. I won't just give up. Unless you're a freaking, uh, you unless you have a freaking genius idea, I'd like to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shh. Screw you! I'd rather die than be a slave. We're leaving. I don't know how, but we're leaving. The stranger smiles slightly. Yeah, it does not a slight smile. Sure, I'm really curious to see what you will do. You and all the villagers start walking with your hands tied along the bandits' caravan. They constantly watch you, and you're unable to find a way to break free. Day after day, you start to resign your to your destiny. The bandits constantly watches over you and don't even allow you to talk to others among yourself. Okay. You barely get to know the ones who shares your destiny. Carlos and April. Carlos and April. Oh, Carlos and April are a couple and they were in the same group with Joseph when they got attacked and kidnapped. There's the young girl, Eva. Or Eva. Eva. Okay, Eva. She seems sad and never speaks. The only thing you're able to discover is, well, is that the bandits killed her family. But finally, after walking for several days through the white plains, something happens. The bad thing is that it doesn't look like something good, not at all. Polished, so, oh shit, I didn't even get through that. Polished and shiny weapons, high tech equipment, and all the bandits look at those three people with reverence and awe. You never saw someone so well equipped walking on the white wasteland. A feminine voice comes from those masked soldiers. Proceed to put the tents. Tests, and let's move on. We have no more time to waste. I'm sure they're good for your needs. Some prisoners are young and healthy. They are perfect for your needs. The woman slowly turns to face the bandit and stands still for a couple of seconds in an impotent danger. We'll see. They approach you and the other prisoners start using some medical equipment to take some of your blood. And then they take a sample from each of you. They go away and after some minutes they come again. The mysterious woman looks at like Goran and Irma. The nods at our two companions. Those take those two and their children. They're the only ones. Oh, take those two and their children. They're the only ones interested. In. Do what you want with the others. We have no use for them. They walk away. Bring Garmer. Jerome tries to stand up on the suite in protest, but he gets kicked in the stomach and falls on the ground. Sir Shane's leave. Taking them with you. With them. Oh, taking with them your companions. While they disappear into the mist, the bandits give you the order to stand up and prepare to walk. You're now walking just like any other day. With armed guards all around you. When you hear some screams coming from some bandits, you turn to see what's happening. Or at least, at least turn to charging the bandits. Quickly descending from the top of the... They're wearing red. They are the red horsemen. Feared bandits and pillagers. The bandits start shooting at them, but the horsemen rapidly reach your position and start attacking your captors in close combat. Uh, Jerome screams before he starts running away. Let's go now! You and the other prisoner are running away. Oh shit! While the bandits are too busy worrying about their own life, you keep running away from the captors while you hear bullets going towards you. One of your bullets, one of the bullets hits Joseph on his, on his chest and he falls on the ground. April stops running and kneels on her companion's body. Jo Joseph! Joseph, please stand up! Jack April away. Will you pull away April from the dead body of her former companion? You hear Carlos' voice. For fuck's sake, run! He's dead, run! Jesus, ow! Someone keeps shooting at you, but the bullets pierce the snow around you without hitting anyone. You're too far to be an easy target. See a tunnel's entrance ahead of you, and your group starts running towards it. You are getting far away from the, your captors. You seem to be too busy fighting the horsemen. You take a look behind you, and you see no one coming after you. 
The tunnel is quite long, but after a few minutes, you finally see the light and the cold wind coming from the outside. Oh. Okay. So now we're out of that area. Where are we, though? Oh, there's where we are. Traveling with your party when you start hearing some strange noises in a few minutes, the noises get stronger and you're able to stand their nature. Some people are unmatedly disgusting near old an old house. Most of them are armed with melee weapons, but one of that seems to be the leader is talking with a gun in his right hand. So they walk towards strange. As soon as they say you, the man with a gun in his hand comes closer and addresses you. Greetings, fellow travellers. I don't know what brings you here, but since you didn't attack us, I hope you are honourable people, am I right? Despite the kind words, the man keeps holding the gun. We're not bandits. And that is good to know. We are honourable people, too, and it's honour itself that brought us here. A dangerous murderer killed three good people is hidden inside that house. Will you help us deal with him? He's ar armed and don't want... Suddenly you hear a deep voice coming from inside. It won't be necessary. I'm coming out to face my fate. Massive black man, that, that's racist, <laughs> comes out of the house carrying a little girl in his arm. You can see, clearly see the bl blood dripping from the girl's body and falling on the ground. The man with the gun and his people raise their weapons and fearfully draw back from the man. Mysterious man comes closer and you can see an expression of pure despair in his face. Are you happy now? You took the life of my little girl and now you'll take mine too? How glorious and noble you are. Shut up you filthy scum. You killed three of my brothers. You brought this upon you. Uh, I, did. I skipped something. Why don't you tell them the whole story? Why don't you tell them how you captured me and my family and how you wanted to sell us as slaves? Don't listen to him. He's lying. He's a That's racist. I'm not going to say that. He should be punished for his crimes. Neutral's silent, but she's clearly disgusted by the scene. Criminal deserves no mercy, and that's why we're going to kill you all. I won't let you do that. What? Are you crazy? Means death for you and your companions. Fight! Oh, good man! Yeah! Okay. There we go. Fucking murder them all. Bow them! Shit! Engage! Yes! Fight! Next! Fight! Yes! Um, you get pushed away from the first line, two enemies move. Yes. No. Fight. Come on. Kill them. I'm just going to keep doing this over and over. It seems to be working. You killed every enemy. The fight is over. Yeah, yeah. You take a moment to look around. Your companions and the black man are taking care of the fools who didn't escape when they had the chance. Oh, my arm is sore. The fight is over and the black man is standing idle with his hands and clothes covered in blood. He's looking at the little girl's body while enter emitting single eyes. Was she your daughter? The, ma the man the man raises his eyes. His expression is no longer furious in his face. You can only see only sadness and despair. Find she was. They took everything from me. Everything. We have always been victims of racism, but no one went that far. Not until we met them. Why? Because they were driven by hate and ignorance. They didn't want to accept our mere existence. They took our things and our lives because they were able to. Uh, it's easier to forget about ethics when you can blame someone for being different. What will you do now? I will bury my beautiful child. That's so bad. His voice trembles and he starts to cry. And I will stand there watching over her until I die. Will you come with us? This world has become empty for me. I have no reason to survive, not anymore. The legendary heroes may have the strength to fight, even without a family. But right now, I am no, no more than an empty shell. I won't force you. Thank you, stranger, I will. Please, leave me alone for some time. I want to be with my child a little longer. Man leaves, taking the girl's body with him. After some time, he returns and talks to you. My name is Mobalaji. Mobalaji? Okay. Stranger... Stranger, and I will do my best to help you and your companions. I don't know what you, but you tried to do the right thing, and that's enough for me. I will do everything that's necessary for the survival of this group, but I have a single request. Please respect my warning, and don't ask me to tell you what happened, or better, pretend nothing happened at all. Okay. 
Can I kill some deer? Take everything. Can I? Okay. Leave the wolves. Um, guns! Yes! Okay. Make it to the house. So I think is a good idea. Okay. Scavenge. See what's in here. Rope. I don't know what that is. What is it? I think I should get more food though. Okay. We can stay here at right at the edge. Yeah, I really think we need more food. Lots and lots more food. Can I not hunt anymore? I can't hunt anymore. Oh god. Start walking faster in a desperate search for a decent shelter, but you're far away from any building. Snow starts falling to the ground, in just a few minutes it becomes more and more. Your visibility drops down, you're barely able to spot it. The voice is weak and distant, you can barely understand what she says. I'm here! I'm coming! I just tumbled on a rock! Chief, I'm going to find her. I won't leave her alone in a storm. We can't split up. No, take the others to safety. Just light a bag. Big fire, we'll find you. Carlos starts running and disappears into the falling snow. Keep walking, hope to find some place where to stay, but your feet subside in the snow, and each step is harder than the one before. You feel the cold wind in your face, and the snow is completely covering you. If you don't find a shelter, you'll die soon. A sudden gust of wind shows you on the ground, and you hit your head in something metallic. A piercing pain flows down all your head, and your sight fades for some seconds. Stand up! Please, stand up! Don't die here! Eva is tugging, on, tugging you, and... You immediately recover your senses. After some seconds, you finally manage to stand up again, but you're unable to see anyone. The group is completely scattered. Scattered? Scattered by it. And you were alone with Eva. I'm glad you were okay. Let's go. Please hold my hand. I don't want to get lost in. Hold her hand. Keep walking when you finally find a guardrail and there's a badly damaged fence near it. Follow the guardrail. Follow the guardrail and after coming to spot a glass pump, there's a building near that. Near it, that can be used to keep walking. You ignore the container, keep walking into the storm. After a couple of minutes, you see a ruined truck. It is bad shelter, but sooner or later, you'll have to stop. Fuck it. Finally found shelter. It's not a place where you could happily live, but having a, even a little protection from the furious storm is better than keep walking outside. The place is cold, and you need a fire to survive long enough. Eva is badly shaking, and she's barely able to speak. I'm so cold. Hook her. Okay. Eva is silent while you hug her. She just placed her arm around, her on your, around your chest. Thank you, I'm better now. That, uh, Thank you, I'm better now. Do what you have to. You and Eva gather around a small fire, carving, craving for heat while your entire body seems frozen to the bones. Some warmth finally starts to flow into your hands and your muscles slowly reduce to tremble. The time passes and the storm finally ends, leaving behind itself a quite clear sky. You seem to... You feel the external temperature raising now and you only need to find your companions. Eva doesn't seem too healthy. At least she survived. She stands up, put her, their backpack on. I'm ready to go. Let's find the others. You start gathering your things while you see a smoke column raising toward the sky. At least someone has survived. It takes a while to reach the place, but finally you see a bug, a bug pyre. Burning in front of an isolated house, you see Demetria throwing some wood into the fire. Takes a while to. Oh. I was waiting for you, glorious lady. I'm glad to see you alive. I'm glad. I'm glad to see you still walking in this frozen world too. Where are the others? I don't know. My guidance. The storm scattered us like snowflakes. If we're lucky, they're alive and walking toward this fire. You suddenly hear a distant scream, and focusing your hearing on it. You clearly discern the word help. Did you hear that? Start running towards the April, towards April's voice. And after some seconds, you're able to see what's the problem. A building collapsed, and according to April, screams Carlos is trapped inside. Thank God you're, thank God you're here. Carlos went inside to do a check of the place, and the damn roof collapsed on his head. You can hear Carlos. Voice coming from under the rubble. Fuck, 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 fuck! <laughs> he seems fine to me. <laughs> I'm not enough wounded to stop swearing, if that's what you say. You hear some noise when you turn its source, you see. Mobile Laji running towards you. 
Carlos is trapped below the rubble. This building looks old. It wasn't a smart idea to go into it right after the storm. The snow weight broke the roof. Thank God we have your brilliant mind to point out the obvious. Fuck you, Carlos. I'm not the one who ignored reason to walk into a deadly trap. You're lucky to be alive. Please, guys, do not fight. We have to save him. Do not fight. Let's save him. Let's get to work. Let's be careful. We need to act with light hand and patient caution. Or the entire building will collapse. We'll waste, we'll waste half a day. Just get him out. It's not wasted time. I know, it's just annoying to spend time to save him from his own recklessness. Spend some time digging Carlos out while Mobile Agic keeps complaining and April worried incitements. And April's worried incitements doesn't help the mood. After more than an hour, Carlos is finally free. My god, are you okay? Carlos limps to reach a rock and sits on it, holding his right leg with his hand. Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Can you walk? It's not that bad. Just give me a few minutes. I'll be able to move. Why the fuck did you enter in there? It was clearly dangerous. Shit, look at that wood. It's completely ruined. Shut up. We went through the worst places. I was just unlucky, that's all. Lucky you were you were an idiot. We were scattered around. You decided to enter in there. Just, just stupid. Fuck you. Do you think to be some sort of walking wisdom? That is not right moment. What? Okay. Mobilaji look, just looked at you in silence and nods with his head before walking away. Carlos stands up and walks away to try to hide the pain coming from his neck. I didn't start it and I don't want to continue it. Let's let's go back to our stuff. Your group starts packing up and in a few minutes you're ready to go. There's some tension here but no one's... Okay, good. Yay. We're doing good. Okay. Okay, well, I'm going to have to leave that episode here. This is a really cool game. I don't know what to actually call it. It says, the actual fucking EXE says Frozen World, but then the game is called Icy. Uh, I don't know. But yeah, it's a cool concept of a game. I like the whole way of to like keep everything going for the whole um, team and shit, which is kind of cool. So yeah. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one! On the way down, screaming! Whoa!